today I'm going to run you through my experience with the free beta weekend of From Other Sons from Gunfire Games. The game is an online co-op, roguelite, space exploration, first person shooter game and if you want to see the initial pieces that will eventually make up the game when it releases, then stay locked, crush that like button, enjoy and I hope it helps. At the start of the game, a quick 15 minute tutorial let me choose graphic settings, ultra all day every day, and crank up the pixel density a little because the normal settings made me feel like I needed glasses to read text. I learned how to access inventory and weapons and then teleported onto my ship to suss out the star chart, ship schematics, comms and tactical console. Through the star chart, I could plot a course and FTL jump through the galaxy with the intention of getting a folding drive back to Earth. On the ship schematic screen, I could direct NPC crew members to carry out repairs. Comms let me hail and answer calls from the crew of opposing ships, and the tactical console was where I could go to war with enemy vessels and fire off a range of projectiles with the intention of turning them to space dust before they afforded me that same luxury. Of note here was an auto firing mode, though I found manual was the way to go. After taking out a ship, salvaging what they left behind and then repairing a hole in my ship, I was dropped to the main menu and ready to hit up the single player mode for a practice run before going knee deep in multiplayer. During the single player mission, I had to make my way through my ship using one of two movement modes, either free locomotion, which included both a turn sensitivity setting and a snap turning option, or a third person comfort mode for users who are more prone to VR motion sickness. This comfort mode put me in first person while standing still and third person when I moved. Here I found the free locomotion mode the most immersive, but in the comfort mode, I tended to take more notice of my surroundings, which was actually a positive side effect. The game can be played seated or standing, and I felt standing was the way to go, though on longer sessions, I'd probably have to resign to a chair. The first thing I had to do on my ship was repair the engine and then make my way to the bridge while checking out NPCs along the way. The NPCs were a good life-size scale and had a Mass Effect kind of get up, which I really liked. I picked up some basic weapons and found that dual wielding was a treat. Holstering weapons and ripping them out again was an absolute pleasure, as was reloading by flicking my wrist quickly downward. Firing had some punch to it, the guns themselves looked great and the line of fire went where I would have expected. The guns I saw in the beta had varying damage ranges and the devs mentioned that in the full game, as you continue towards earth, we would see the guns get better. Through the beta, a varied amount of mid-range pistols, short-range shotguns and almost any range auto pistols were on offer and while the pistols and shotguns seemed reasonably balanced, the assault rifles were a little overpowered but was still lots of fun. There was also weapon and item racks in my ship where I could offload items and weapons before heading out on missions. On the bridge, I was told to set out for Earth in order to return a salvaged folding drive, but not before using the star chart to make an FTL jump to a fuel station to top up my petrol tank. I had to teleport aboard the fuel station, which was some straight up Stargate shit, and this is where VR really pulled away from traditional gaming. Making that teleport in a flat game wouldn't even get a mention, but in VR it really put me in the game and made me feel like I had just transcended walking and literally beamed onto another vessel altogether. Loved it. I disposed of the first round of enemies with eye burning face shots and then used a more cover based approach on the second round. Combat was fun though I did find it a bit medium paced and a little on the too easy side. And while I get that this is a beta and the game is easing you into things, a little extra grit could have made things a little more engaging. In saying that though, the game does feature permadeath and it would have been a massive bitch to die this early. So realistic the difficulty level was probably about right this early on. Once I disposed of the enemy NPCs, I took their guns, 
picked up some health and located a key card to unlock the area I needed to get to. And it was here that I discovered what an absolute dream it was to use the full inventory system. Holding a button on the touch controller with one hand and then adding or removing items from the inventory with my other hand was intuitive and seamless. And next to the gallery or the Wilson's Heart inventory systems, it was definitely one of the best I've had the pleasure of using. I continued to make my way through the procedurally generated rooms while using my wrist map to guide my path. And when I arrived at the destination, I picked up a Hackatron and hacked the ship's terminal so I could pillage its fuel and supplies, and then return to my ship to continue the journey to Earth. Back on my ship, I used the FTL engine to jump to another point on the star chart where I ran into an intergalactic trader who allowed me to buy and sell fuel, ammo, crew and weapons, as well as upgrade engines, shields, weapons and sections of my ship. Jumping out of that sector, I came across a steampunk pirate princess in distress who needed me to rid her ship of pirates so she could escape the pirating life. After accepting that offer, I then pretty much did the same as what I did for the refuel mission and teleported over, relieved the ship of enemies, stole some shit, restocked my ship and collected a salvage reward. The next jump took me into enemy territory where I had to engage this guy in ship to ship combat. And I used the tactical screen to fire projectiles and the schematic screen to direct my crew to carry out repairs in order to maintain the conflict. All the while keeping an eye on the two forward facing screens where one had my ship stats and the other had the enemy ship stats, where obviously first to zero dies. During this event, a couple of enemy crew members boarded my ship, but my NPC crewmates took them out within seconds. After two rounds of fire, I blew the ship to bits and then again collected a salvage reward. Pretty easy, and I didn't actually have to do any crew management. Though, later on down the line, I did get onto some bigger ships, which resulted in much tougher battles and required much more heavy duty crew management. And that is essentially what I did for the first couple of hours in a repeating pattern. Jumped, blew up ships, shot down NPCs, hacked and salvaged. And even though the beta was limited to 10 FTL jumps, the whole thing was a lot of fun and did show off some of the depth that the full game will have to work with. As for the multiplayer, the captain is the lobby host and mutiny is entirely possible as crew members can absolutely kill each other, which results in a permanent game over. I didn't have any connection issues as such and didn't really notice any lag, which out here on this side of the swamp, especially when playing against international players, is actually quite rare and equally impressive. I found four lobbies easily, one after the other, then I did have to go it alone for one mission before I could find more lobbies. All in all, that's more than acceptable in my opinion, especially for a VR title. On the ship, I didn't feel any sense of urgency to keep real players committed to a specific co-op task, like I've seen in Star Trek Bridge Crew. Instead, everyone either wanted to be on the bridge firing torpedoes from the ship's only console, or running amok on the enemy ship. And shit, I wasn't gonna stand in an engine room and point a repair gun at an engine when I could be fucking up NPCs with frickin' laser beams. This may have actually been a limitation of the beta though, as the game definitely didn't hit its full stride. So perhaps greater challenges would fulfill that need for more coordinated co-op survival tactics. The away missions and first person combat on the other hand were made for co-op play, and it was great to sweep an enemy ship directing enemy fire while my teammates flanked the opposition. The sound was crisp and the voice acting was clear and well read, and there were notes of 80s sci-fi synth background music. The only real issue was that my footsteps sounded like they were coming from someone walking on the upper decks, which threw me out a bit, and the voices of other online players wasn't at all directional, which is standard in online game chat, though I do feel this is an avenue where VR can really exceed. As for criticisms, enemies disappeared once they were dead, which is a pretty big immersion killer for me, and the whole 
whole beta was a little on the easy side. The devs have said that the beta is really to ease you into the game and give a good idea of the game's core mechanics and controls, as well as test out the multiplayer aspect. And that sounds about right, as the game did ramp up at one point, but it was actually quite a severe difficulty curve and went from super easy to a lot tougher in the space of a single FTL jump. There was no character customization or progression, which is apparently because your individual character isn't a focus. And so in order to scratch the customization itch, you will need to do that via new ships and legendary weapons. I felt some character customization would be nice, especially given that almost all your time is spent in first person mode as your character and not actually flying a ship from a third person perspective where those ship customizations would be much more noticeable. Also, from what I played in the beta, crew management didn't really seem to be a major focus as the NPCs did their own thing quite well. But I did see briefly that when the game got tough, more attention was required in directing my crew in order to keep my ship maintained. So that's not really a criticism as such because it's more of another limitation of the beta specifically, not the full game. All Up from Other Suns actually makes it tough for me to understand why anyone would prefer to play a game like this outside of VR, especially if you're accustomed to full free locomotion movement. The environments and the gameplay are immersive and it all had that smooth gunfire games, chrono style graphical polish. In addition, as far as betas go, this was well executed and struck a great balance between core mechanics and content on offer versus smooth gameplay and functionality. If this outing was all there was to the entire game, I'd give it about a low seven. But as far as betas go, I'd have to give this an overall beta rating of eight out of 10. There's no denying it's worth a trying. If this game sticks to its guns and builds on the beta with ship and weapon customization, increased difficulty, and solid ship to ship and first person PVE combat, then it'll be a winner with a wide range of players. And with a mashup of crew management, first person shooting, and space exploration, all in a roguelite wrapper, there's a lot on offer here, and a lot to like. The multiplayer was smooth, I didn't fall through any walls, the environments were a pleasure, the combat was there, and the core mechanics and control options all seemed to be on point. Little niggles aside, Gunfire Games are taking the fight to the stars, and I'm looking forward to getting that folding drive back to Earth, so that it can bump up my frame rate by 15 FPS, obviously. And that's it for this review. So if you like what you saw, then crush that like button, click the links on screen now for more content, or click the XO logo to subscribe if you wanna. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.